There is something I forgot to mention in my video talking about buying from Carvana this time. And that is oil changes. Every car I've ever gotten on the oil life meter said 100%. Except for the electric spark EV, of course, because it doesn't have oil. But So evidently they changed the oil of all their cars, or so I thought. The vote said oil life 36%. Which means either they didn't change it or they forgot to reset the oil life indicator. I have a feeling it was the second. But still, I'm going to change the oil when it gets close to 0% because I can't trust that they forgot to reset it. You know, and um, I know some of you are thinking, just look at the dipstick and see how clean the oil looks. You know, I don't trust, my, I don't trust that enough. And when it gets down to 0%, I'm going to change the oil. That's what I think. And um, another thing. The Spark EV that you're about to see that I traded for this car, I found it. It's on Carvana site for sale. $10,400. They gave me $7,900. 7900 plus $2,500 is $10,400, which I won't say confirms, but um, gives evidence to the fact of what a Carvana associate told me at one time. Now, on this purchase, but on a, a previous time, I asked him, I said, why is it sometimes on your website you'll see two cars that are almost identical, but the price is sometimes hundreds of dollars difference or a thousand dollars different and they said that Carvana always marks their cars up he may have said usually but anyway he said Carvana usually or always marks their cars up a certain dollar amount he said I think it's twenty five hundred dollars you know if, if we give them an auction then we pass the savings on it's kind of odd that in May of 2018 uh, the Spark EV was ninety five hundred dollars which is what I paid for it ninety five hundred then uh, January of 2019, uh, let's see, that's uh, seven, eight months later, instead of $9,500, it's $10,400. Evidently, when I bought it, they had acquired it at an auction and got it a lot cheaper. Anyway, just want to throw those two things out. If Carvana had called me on the sixth day of ownership, which they normally do, I was going to hit them up for $80 for an oil change. And I'm almost certain they would have sent me a check for 80 bucks. But they never called. Usually they do, but they didn't this time. Anyway, just want to throw that out. Enjoy the video, or I hope you enjoy it, and maybe learn something anyway. Today I'm taking a trip from Paragold, Arkansas to Pocahontas and back, and I'm going to talk about my fifth purchase, our fifth purchase from Carvana, this 2015 Chevy Volt. Now, it's only our fourth purchase, if you just count me and my wife. My adult son, he also bought a car there, and there's another video I've put out called buy them from Carvana four different times and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video so you can look at it if you want but when they brought the car it was spotless which is unusual sometimes Carvana their cars are a little bit dusty when they give them to the customer but you know I haven't done anything to this and it's just really really clean by the way the vote the bucket seats in the back are really cool for the boat, I think. The reason that is, is because the battery runs right there underneath that molding, goes behind the seat and goes off into a T. That's why they have bucket seats. And yep, the dash was nice and clean. A lot of cars from Carvana, this is where you'll see a lot of dust and stuff. And I've never understood why the guy doing the final delivery as part of their policy, I don't understand why they don't have him rub it down with a cloth or something. And he did say that uh, he mentioned something and somewhere in the sentence was, I, you know, he said something about them cleaning the car up before they brought it to me. So maybe they are starting to do that. Maybe they have gotten some complaints. And cars from Carvana I've gotten are never nasty. They're never really dirty. They're just not as clean as you, you normally get at a traditional dealership. Normally you pick a car up at a traditional dealer, it's pretty well spotless. And this car was spotless, but most times that has not been the case. The first time we bought from Carvana, and you'll see all these different purchases if you watch my other video about buying from Carvana four different times. The first time we went all the way to Nashville, which is about 250 miles or so, so we could buy my wife's SUV out of the vending machine. The second time we was gonna have it delivered and they would deliver to Paragold, Arkansas. They have a hub in Memphis, Tennessee, but Paragold was outside their area, but they would deliver 25 miles down the road to Jonesboro. So we met them there. 
The third time was an electric car, and we were supposed to meet him in Jonesboro again, but the guy called that day and said, hey, the car's not charged, and I'm afraid you won't be able to make it home. You know, and what little battery is left. So he said that even though we were just slightly outside the delivery area, they would bring it to our house, which is great. Well, this time, I told a half lie. And I told him, I said, hey, the guy said last time, since we bought from you four times, he's going to go ahead and bring it to the house. I was wondering if y'all could do that again with our field purchase. Which, okay, he did bring it to the house, but it was a totally different reason than what I told him. And they said they would. And the delivery guy, when he got there, he told me, he said, man, we ran the numbers. And according to, we deliver up to 100 miles from the Memphis hub. And, whoops, I'm speeding. I forgot the speed limit dropped to 55. Anyway, he said, we deliver up to 100 miles from the Memphis hub. He said, your house is 99.9 .9 miles away from the Memphis hub. <laughs> so 0.1 miles further, they wouldn't be able to deliver, except for the fact it's not written in stones, they still would have. And it's based on zip code. Even though they'll deliver within 100 miles of a hub, they actually base it on zip code. And I told him, he needs to tell the powers that be at Carvana that they need to go ahead and add 72451 to their uh, available delivery area, which is Paragool. Because I live pretty much in the middle of Paragool, so if the middle of Paragool is 99.9 .9 miles, they should deliver to the town, I would think. But anyway, how delivered to your house is just really convenient, really easy. They do all the paperwork there at your desk. I mean, at, the, at your kitchen table. And if he showed up and we didn't like the car, we could have sent it back right there. And when they bring it, that's when you can kick the tires, raise the hood, give it the once over, drive it around the block, drive it down the street, whatever you want to do, and you can either keep it or send it back. And if you keep it, you still have seven days, no questions asked, to send the car back, which is a huge benefit, I think. No other dealership I know of will let you bring a car back within seven days. You have until 6 p.m. on that seventh day to call them and say, I don't want it, come get it. And this is the only time this car here that they have not called me on day six to make sure I want to keep it. So they'll probably call you on the sixth day, but don't count on it. That's up to you to call them if you don't want it. Now they have a policy where, you know, the one time I threatened to send one back, they asked me if I'd like to try another one. And I, I wound up keeping the car. And I looked at the fine print of their return policy, and you can do that. You can ask them to send another car that you want to try. And if you don't like that one, then that's it. You can only do this, you can only have them bring another car once. It says if you ask them to bring another one after that, then it's just like a traditional dealership. They'll bring it, you can look at it, test drive it, whatever, and you accept it with no return policy or you send it back right then. So they're not going to let you be sneaky and keep sending them back over and over and over. Now, it did not specify if you can only uh, request they send another one once in your lifetime or once per order. I have a feeling it's once per order. But the seven-day return policy is awesome. And something else that came into play is their 100-day warranty. Every car they sell comes with a 100-day bumper-to-bumper warranty or 4,000 and some odd miles is a weird number and I'll put that number right here. Why they came up with that number I have no idea but this many miles or four months whichever comes first bumper to bumper. Well it's a good thing because on day nine when it was about 40 hours too late to send this car back day nine the heater all of a sudden started blowing cold. And I get really worried when warranty companies are involved. I'm afraid they'll use any excuse in the world not to pay. We had that happen once before with another warranty company. But anyway, once I talked to Silver Rock, I knew it wasn't going to be a problem. They said I could take it to any dealer I wanted to that actually had a license. I forget what you call it. It's three initials. ACM, AMC, something. It pretty much means you're authorized, you know, you have the license to work on cars. You've been trained. So I could take it to a mom and pop garage if I wanted to. But this being an electric car, I had to take it to General Motors. And I did, and they fixed it. 
and the warranty company would not pay for the coolant. I had paid twenty-five dollars and some change for the coolant, but they paid for everything else. And I don't know for sure what it cost, but I saw what looked like a receipt that had to deal with my car, and handwritten was four hundred and eighty some odd dollars and some cents. So I have a feeling it cost the warranty company almost five hundred dollars to fix this car, but it is working. So man, that's fantastic. A hundred day bumper to bumper warranty. Now most reputable dealers will take care of a problem if it's just a few days. If I bought this from the GMC dealership on the used side or the Ford dealership on the used side, you know, Glen Sane, uh, for sure, I'd been shocked if they wouldn't have fixed it after the heater tore up after nine days. But you never know, and I'm sure some dealerships would I bought a car once from a dealership in Kansas City. Went all the way to Kansas City to pick up this car. Well, my daughter lived in the area, so it gave me an excuse to go see her anyway. All the way home, the brakes were squeaking. It wound up, the rotors were so bad they had to be replaced. It was Jay Wolf, Jay Wolf Toyota in Kansas City. Anyway, Jay Wolf, uh, they did tell me to take it to the nearest uh, Toyota dealership since I lived, you know, eight hours away from where I bought it. Or they would have taken care of it themselves if I'd lived locally. And they sent Central Toyota in Jonesboro over $400 to fix that car. So most dealerships will fix a problem if it's just within a few days. The more expensive the problem, like something that's going to cost thousands of dollars, I think the less likely that they would fix it. Besides, you don't want to count on it, but Carvana, it's written down. You get a guarantee, 100 days, bumper to bumper warranty, which is all, man, that's just such a cool deal. I like that. I like the fact that uh, Silver Rock didn't use loopholes or excuses to get out of it. I have a feeling why. Carvana, the last reported quarter, sold almost 300 cars a day. They sold 25,000 cars that quarter. That means Silver Rock is getting almost 300 contracts a day. If they start using excuses not to fix the cars that tear up, I think Carvana would probably fire them and cancel the contract and get somebody else. And Silver Rock knows this, so they're not going to mess around with it. I'm almost to town where I'll get a lot better miles on the battery than I will on gas. So I'm going to switch it over. We just switched the battery. We're getting 36 miles to the gallon. Almost the whole trip has been on gas. Speed limit's dropping to 45, we're almost our destination. Roughly 36, 37 miles, 38 miles from home, 32 miles left on the gasometer. Well, heading home. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. 36.9 miles per gallon. Another thing about Carvana, here's one thing I like about Carvana. Well, let me get out of this. Let me get out of town, then I'll talk about it. One of the things I like about Carvana is they don't have any salesmen, and I explained this in the other video. A lot of stuff I say today, you've already heard if you watched my first Carvana video. They don't have any salesmen, any lying, conniving, piece of crap, deceptive salesmen. I could tell you story after story after story after story of times I've been lied to deceived, attempted deception, sometimes actual deception, and just treated like a kid, talked down to. I mean, salesmen are the scourge of the earth. Now, present company excluded, of course. If there's somebody that you love, you care about, that sells cars for a living, then I'm sure they're the exception. But they're the only one. 99% of all salesmen, I'm not going to say that, 96% of all salesmen are lying scuzzballs. If you sell cars for a living, you may be that 4%, but if you look to your left and look to your right when you're at work, you're looking at scummy pieces of crap is what you're looking at. Man, I cannot stand car salesmen. I can stand them. And they're, in every industry, there's good and bad. So there are like, over the whole country, maybe six honest car salesmen course is actually more than that but you get what I mean but anyway Carvana hires no salesman I love that I also love the fact that you punch in your VIN number or I hear they got a new way now just your license plate or the description of the car 
and they will tell you what your trade-in value is or their buy price, which they'll buy for the same price before they know what you're going to buy. Traditional dealers don't like that. I was looking at a car once, a used car at a, at a new car lot, and it was a fairly cheap car, and I had my trade-in value, but that's in another car. No, no, it was a more expensive car, and I had my trade-in value, and we had it all worked out, but then I seen a cheaper car, much cheaper. I don't remember these numbers. I'm making them up. Let's say I was looking at an $18,000 car, and then I started looking at a $12,000 car. He's, and I said, well, if I buy this one, will it change my trade-in value? He said, yeah, probably so. I said, why? And I don't remember what he said. I'm sure it was just complete bullshit, whatever he told me. Carvana, they'll give you the trade-in price before you even know what you're going to buy. And from what I understand, if you buy something cheaper than what they're going to give you for your car, they'll write you a check for the difference. Good luck getting that at a traditional dealership. They want to know what your trade-in value is. So you can take that number and manipulate it. Because that's what they are. A bunch of scuzzball manipulators. Sorry, pieces of crap. They should take every lawyer joke in the world and replace it with car dealer. With the word car dealer. and be even funnier. But anyway, I like that. I also like the fact they have many, many to choose from. If I wanted a, a used Chevy Volt in Northeast Arkansas, I would not be able to find one. There, I, I would be shocked if there's even one on any car lot within a 100 mile radius. Well, the bridge to Memphis, Tennessee is 90 miles. So maybe in Memphis. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there's two or three in Memphis at those car lots. But for sure within 75, 80 mile radius of my house, I really doubt they have one. Carvana had probably 30, 40, maybe 50 to choose from. But because of my budget, I accidentally had a choice of about five or six, but that's just because of what I could spend. When my wife, when she bought her GMC Terrain, then she had, I think just, I think it was over a hundred terrains to choose from. I know it was at least 60 or 70. There is no way, if you want to buy a used GMC Terrain in Northeast Arkansas, you could find a hundred used ones at a car lot. And probably not even car lots and individuals combined. You just couldn't do it. I mean, there are so many choices at Carvana. There are also some downsides, like my EV hating cousin pointed out. He's not a Carvana hating cousin, just EV hater. And what he said is a good point. He said, you cannot drive two cars from Carvana. You can't go to Carvana, drive two cars, and decide which one you want between those two. What he was getting at was this car. I was trying to decide between the premium and this one. The premium for the, had the, was the same price, but had 16, 17,000 more miles, a lot more features, same year, and they're about the same price. I would, I would really like to have driven them both because I don't like black, and it was black interior and exterior, which really turned me off. But it had heated seats. I had a $2,500 Bose system in it, seven speakers. And I would love to have driven that car, listen to that stereo, tried out those automatic heated seats. Yes, it has automatic or manual heated seats, your choice. I'd like to try that, but I could not drive them both. So that's a legitimate point. No industry is perfect, no company is perfect. Carvana is not perfect. But the Carvana Associates are so nice. The guy that brings it to my house, the guy that brings it to your house, I'd be shocked, or girl, I've had to learn my girl too. I don't know why I said guy. Sometimes I just replace the word with person with guy for some reason. The person that brought it to my house, which happened to be a guy, so nice. When I met up in Jonesboro, that young lady was so nice. When we went to the uh, vending machine in Nashville, they were super nice people. It, it, I really like dealing with friendly people. Now, traditional dealers, they can be very nice too. Very nice. But it's fake and phony. Car dealers are friendly while they're stabbing you in the back. Never give a traditional car dealer any more information than you have to. Because they'll use that information against you. You should, you should view them as if you're a defendant and they're the prosecuting attorney. Anything you say to a traditional car dealer will be used against you. When they ask you, what do you want your payment to be? Say, don't worry about what my payment is going to be. It'll be whatever it'll be. I know what I can afford. Then they'll say, because I've done this before, they'll say, 
Well, we need to kind of get a ballpark figure what you want your payment to be so we know what you can afford. We can help you find the right car. Then I say, I know the right car when I see it, and I know what I can afford by looking at the price. Minus my trade in. Then they'll bring on some more bullshit where they're trying to manipulate, manipulate you. Sorry, pieces of crap. Man, nothing gets my blood boiling like a car dealer. But anyway, look at that. There's a sorry piece of crap car lot right there. I guarantee you, there's lying scumbags in that building right now. Present company excluded, of course, if you, you have a family member working there. I'm sure they're one of the honest ones. See? Y'all, I got myself going. <laughs> That's why people can't mention car dealers around me. Oh, I get mad. Just because I know how they are. Pieces of crap. That's why I like Carvana. Go Carvana. On my video, buying from Carvana four different times, somebody put in the comment section something, I don't remember exactly what they said, something like, oh yeah, traditional dealers are horrible, but if you sell it, if you put the car in a vending machine, then suddenly you're a good guy. <laughs> well, the bottom line is, it's not that I really love Carvana that much, I do, but it's more that I hate traditional dealerships that much. Yeah, I do like Carvana, but it's more my hatred of dealers than it is my love for Carvana that makes me keep going back. If traditional dealers started doing what Carvana does, but with their cars, you know, right there on the lot, if they act like Carvana, then I, I might go buy a car from them every once in a while. I still like Carvana for other reasons, like, you know, more choice and seven-day return policy. But it's just the fact that traditional dealers suck, and Carvana is doing everything right. So my final thoughts are, I think Carvana is the best place to buy a car for me. It may not be for you. If you're the type or the only thing you care about is your monthly payment, which a, a lot of people are like that then a traditional dealer may be okay with you because as long as all you care about is your monthly payment, man, they're friendly, they won't talk down to you, you'll be able to get a car that day, which is another negative for Carvana. When a lot of people decide they want a car on a Tuesday, if they decide on a Tuesday they want a new car, by God, they want it that day. They're not willing to wait a week or 10 days. You know, so uh, that's a negative for Carvana. You've got to wait about a week in most instances to get your car. They advertise you can get as little as the next day, but the odds are very slim. You have to live real close to where the car currently is. Most times you have to ship it from four, five, six, seven, or eight states over, you know, to their local hub, which in this area is Memphis, Tennessee. <coughs> Excuse me. Then they'll deliver it. But most times you'll have to wait but anyway for some of you may like traditional dealers some of you may not mind you know the shenanigans they pull but anyway i like them here's one more thing about carvana <coughs> excuse me they handle all the tags and stuff for you and they'll they'll give you they'll deliver your car with a temporary tag on it every time we bought it they've had to send us another temporary tag they cannot get your regular tags before the 30 days is up on the temporaries. And I think I know why. They cannot start the process of getting your tags to you until you've had the car seven days because it's possible you could return it. So that puts them behind schedule. So Carvana really only has three weeks instead of a month like most dealers do to get your tags to you. And I asked them, I said, can I just take care of it myself, go to the revenue office myself and take care of my own tags? And they said, if you're doing your own financing or paying cash, you can. But if you go through our preferred financial group, which is Bridgecrest, then you can't. They insist we take care of it. <coughs> Sorry. But it's no big deal. I don't have to even call them. The first time I called them, I told them my temporary tags are about to expire, and they said they'd send me another one. The next time I didn't even call, and every time they automatically send it three or four days before your temporary tax expire. And then by the time those expire, I've always got my, which I have handicap plates. So I have to transfer my tags. And I'll eventually get, I don't remember what I get, a registration in the mail or something saying it's okay to put them on the car. But I love Carvana. I do. I, I think. 
I think, as a matter of fact, for full disclosure, I like it so much, I bought stock in the company after the, my first purchase. Now, I didn't buy enough where it's going to make me rich someday, but I did buy some stock for full disclosure. You know, but if I thought it could make me money, I'd buy stock in a traditional dealership too. Well, probably. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I probably would. Even though they hire a bunch of liars, you know, to work for them. Yeah, if I thought I could make money, I would. It's only a few things I won't invest in. I will not invest in tobacco companies. I will not invest in marijuana companies. I will, there's very few companies I won't invest in. The rest of them, big oil, go big oil. They used to have stock in Exxon. I'd buy it again if I thought I could make some money. All right, y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching. Remember, chicks dig scars on electric cars. They also dig getting a new car. Everybody loves getting a new car. So when you're a chick -a doo when she wants a new car, check out Carvana's website. Or take her up to a traditional dealer and let her get lied to. And see how much of their crap that she actually believes. Have a great day and thanks for watching.